I got a call one day saying, are you reasonably fit? And it was the editor of the in-flight magazine, Flying Springbok. And I said, yeah, it's fine. I can, you know, I do a bit of exercise. And they said, okay, good. You're on in a couple of weeks to go through to Kilimanjaro in Tanzania and photograph a team that's climbing the mountain. This video looks at how a photographic assignment that sounds simple and easy over the telephone can turn into a bit of a challenge. My initial thoughts were, hey, free holiday, take a couple of pretty pictures, a quick up and down the mountain, and that'll be it. Then I started getting really uneasy when I found out it was five days on the mountain and that it was minus 20 degrees Celsius at the top which is equivalent to minus 4 Fahrenheit, while at the base of the mountain it was 38 degrees Celsius or 100 Fahrenheit. Then I was told that actually up on the crater there's less than 50% of the oxygen level that you would have at sea level. Now in some ways that doesn't sound too scary if you consider that the oxygen level at the top of Kilimanjaro is equivalent to that at the base camp of Everest. But there's no way to know beforehand whether your body is going to react adversely to the lack of oxygen. Some really fit people have made it almost to the top and then they've had to turn back because they just couldn't make it. This first part is just like a really relaxed walk through a beautiful wooded area. On this section I started getting a little bit more optimistic because we met some young guy who'd actually run up and back down the mountain in less than 24 hours. So I just thought, well, how difficult can things be? And actually the first three days were pretty easy going and our guide would say over and over, pole pole, which means slowly, slowly. So that's exactly what I did. By far my biggest challenge so far had been the toilets, which looked like they hadn't been cleaned in a month. As one got closer to the actual base of the volcano, one could feel the effect of the diminishing oxygen levels. Everyone was a little bit concerned that perhaps their body wouldn't cope with the lack of oxygen and they wouldn't finally get to the peak. But the pressure was on for me because I had to get a decent photograph of the team at Uhuru Peak, which is the highest point. I was holding on to the statistic that 70 to 80 percent of people make it. Kibo Hut was the place where things started to make a downward turn. You get to the hut at 3, 4 in the afternoon and you know that you must start climbing the steep volcano slope at 12 that night. So in pitch darkness we started our ascent up the winding path that weaves through the volcanic scree. I was grumpy and wanted to go to sleep and it was grim. It was dark and you can only see the person just ahead of you. It was amazing that as you started getting higher and higher one could feel the oxygen just depleting and you started getting really tired. It took about five hours to get up the slope to the edge of the crater and whenever we stopped I would fall asleep with my head on the pack of the guy in front of me. So for me the holiday was definitely over and now it was just work and I had to get the job completed. At Gilman's point on the edge of the crater we just slumped ourselves down and watched the sun rise and it was really beautiful as the light bounced between the clouds that were below us and those that were above us. From this stop to Uhuru Peak was just under two kilometers. As a group we were pretty much all feeling depleted but having got that far we really wanted to get to the peak. I shifted from grumpy to survival mode. And as we got closer and closer to the peak, we were literally walking 10 to 15 steps and then we would stop and get our breath. One guy in our party was really taking strain and at 100 meters away from the peak, we had a meeting to decide whether we were going to go on. The guy that was taking strain was having heart palpitations and severe migraines. And so he decided it was probably not a good idea to carry on. The rest of us literally walked three steps at a time and then we would stop. And eventually we made it to Uhuru Peak. As I slumped down in the snow and grappled around in my bag for my camera, I was remembering something I'd read that some people had reached this point and found that their camera had frozen and they were unable to take a photograph. I managed to get my victory photograph and I took a few other scenic shots, but then we headed off down the mountain. 
I felt such relief. I'd taken the photographs, I'd managed to get to Uhuru Peak, and with each step you could literally feel the oxygen levels increasing. I found that every now and again doing this kind of travel job was a great way to pull oneself out of the more intense journalistic or political work. I seldom came back from this kind of trip with images that I thought were really amazing, but it gave one's eye and one's mind a break from looking at things so intently. Not all the images in this video are mine, I collected a few from the internet. But thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Is it over yet? Yes, it is good. It really is. What are they? Well... and find out what the future holds in store. Is it over yet?